Mac Gaibo. Hi, I'm Mac Gaibo, and I'm going to be giving away over a thousand ships. Now, these ships are specifically for people who are brand new to PvP, particularly PvP in low sec. I believe that PvP in low security space, in fact, low security space in general, is a vastly underappreciated and underused asset in EVE Online. And I'm doing my little bit to try and encourage people to discover it, and particularly PvP, to give it a chance at no risk to them. And I'm going to be doing that by giving away over a thousand frigates. Now, maybe you're new to EVE Online, maybe you're an industrialist and you've never really branched out into PvP then this is for you. All the ships that I'm giving away are frigates, basic frigates with T1 fits. They are completely disposable and they're just designed for a bit of fun. And they're also fit that way so beginners can use them as well. I've got a good variety of ships so no matter what race your character is there'll be something for you. All of the ships that I'm giving away are currently based in a system called Shafit. The station is Station 9 Ali Astra Warehouse. Now the reason that I've picked that system is because it's right next door to low security space and it's the perfect entry point for you to jump in, jump around a few of the surrounding systems and try out PvP for yourself. If you're unsure about what low security space is then I've got a video which will tell you all about it. I can also provide you with this map which shows the system that we're currently in, the system you jump into to access low security space and all of the surrounding area where you can go to have a look around and get yourself a fight. Also, this web page will give you loads more details about low security space and finding a fight. The ships that I'm giving away are a mixture, as you can see, of Atrons, Kestrels, Merlins, Punishers, Rifters and Slashes. You might spot there's only 982 ships there, but I've got another 50 Slashes coming. Once you're docked in this station, go to the Guests tab and find anybody here who is in the corporation Sapphire and Steel. Just send them a little message, open up a trade window, and I'll pass you over a ship of your choice. What I'll do just now is briefly show you the fits on each of the ships so you know which, what to expect and which one you'd like to pick. This is the Atron fit and I should point out that all of these fits are from the band apart Frigate Free For All from last year. So I'll, thanks, I'll thank Rick Javix for all of these fits because he's the one who designed them all. This is the Atron. You've got three blasters up front, a warp scrambler, a web of fire, a magnetic field stabilizer, overdrive injector, and a damage control. You've also got three transverse bulkheads, which means that you're hull tanking in this ship. This is a blaster fit Atron. My optimal range is 938 meters, so I'm practically on top of the ship that I'm fighting. For those new to PvP, a web of fire will slow the ship down that you're targeting, and a scrambler will stop it from being able to warp off and shut down its micro warp drive. That will work up to seven and a half thousand meters away. A web of fire will work within 10 kilometers. If you lock it, use it on the ship that you're fighting. Magnetic field stabilizer increases the damage of your blasters. Your overdrive injector makes you go faster and your damage control increases resistances across the board. That means you're going to take less damage. These rigs on your ship increase the amount of hull points that you've got. The Kestrel is a rocket fit ship. It comes with four different flavors of rockets and you get a thousand of each. You'll need to swap that out depending on what you're fighting. But in basic terms, you'll want to use Inferno against Amar ships, Mjolnir against Kaldari ships, Nova against Galenti ships, and Scourge against Minmatar ships. But like I say, that's very basic. So you've got four rocket launches in the high points. You've got the, another warp scrambler on a web of fire, which we've covered before. Medium shield extender, which as it says, it boosts your shields. The afterburner is what's known as a prop mod. It makes you go faster. Again, a damage mod, which is a ballistic control system, which increases the damage of the missile launchers and another damage control. And the rigs this time are for the shields. 
One's that makes the shield bigger, and the other two fill the gap in your EM shield resistance. So naturally, with the Kestrel, there's a bit of a hole with your EM resistance. This patches that hole. This is the Merlin, which comes with three blasters and two webs. Two webs are fantastic, and there's a lot of pilots hate two webs. It practically brings your opponent's ship to a standstill. If you're fighting against someone who's speed tanked, which means they're relying on their speed to be able to damage you without you damaging them, that could kill their game stone dead. It also comes with a warp scrambler and an afterburner. It has two magnetic field stabilizers to increase the damage of the guns, and again, another damage control. Three armor pump rigs, which increase the amount of armor that you have. Next up is a Punisher which is coming with four small lasers. It's only got two slots in the mid, so we're going with a prop mod and a scrambler. And it's got five low points. So I'm gonna give you armor plates, a couple of resistances, a heat sink to increase the damage of the lasers and a damage control. The multi-spectrum coatings provide additional armor resistance. And you've got two of them there. And again, small Trimark armor pump rigs boost up your armor total. This is a tough little nut. Next up is a Rifter. This is an auto cannon ship. Optimal range is 1,250, but that can depend on the ammo that you're using in your skills as well. So if you don't see exactly the same number as this, then that's why. Also boosters and augmentations, implants, they could affect that number there. Three mid slots, so you've got your prop mod, which is an afterburner, the scrambler, and the web. Gyro stabilizer increases the damage of the auto cannons. And this has got what's known as an active mod, as an armor repairer. That means that you have to switch it on to use it. You've got the steel plate and the damage control, which are defensive mods. Three transverse bulkheads provide you with more hit points in your hull. And it's got three different sorts of ammo here. So if you've started off as a Minmatar pilot, you might find that auto cannons are within your skills. Final ship is the wonderful Slasher. Three auto cannons in the high slots, a shield, prop mod, scrambler, and webifier in the mids. Overdrive injector system makes your ship go faster, and damage control in the low slot. This rig increases your power grade, which allows us to fit everything else. And we've got two other shield rigs as well. Three different forms of ammo will get you up and running. The idea is simple. You pick up one of these ships, you undock, you warp and jump to the Uletta gate, and while you're in warp, make sure that you've got some ammo. Make sure that your safety is set to at least orange or red if you want to shoot pods. Make sure that you can see this, your local chat. It tells you who's in system. And the other invaluable thing is to open up the directional scanner and that tells you what's in system. There's quite a lot of ships for Uleta. And Uletta is also a small system, so everything is on scan. I can see this is a Hecate and there's a Kestrel, and Algos has just jumped in as well. If I look at the map I've got, what I could do is make my way to Hadeals, because there's a few systems on the way. So I'll just type Hadeals, do set destination, and let's warp to the next gate. Now the reason that I changed the safety setting here is if I left it green, I wouldn't be able to attack anybody. If you've got it on orange, you can attack someone, but you can't kill pods. If you attack anybody who isn't suspect or criminal on a gate, the gate guns are going to shoot you. Same for a station. Station guns will kill you. Now, two of the pilots in this system are in the same corp, so they're probably going to be working together. I'm just going to warp over to the next system. So I've just jumped in the system. There's a Malediction, which is an interceptor. Very fast ship. And a Caracal, which is a cruiser. This is quite a quiet time of day, so I'm having to make a couple of jumps before I can find a fight. That isn't unusual. But that's one of the reasons that I say that low security space is underused. So I've got to hear deals. I'll take a little look at what's happening here. So. I can see that there is already one pilot is suspect. It's a Shadow Cartel pilot. And I can see that there's a small and novice outpost. They're out with my scan range, because I can only scan up to 14.3 EU. 
and they are 42.4 AU but we'll just warp to it you can take additional risks and learn from them because these ships like I say are disposable the only thing that you potentially lose in these fights is a little bit of security status which is easily worked back up again through ratting or through handing in a security tag there's no permanent damage done to you at all so there's an Atron and an Incursus so I really want to be loading up Nova rockets and if I switch this down to 0 0.1 it tells me that both of them are inside here there's no way I can kill both of these ships but I can get a fight so I'm going to go for the Incursus I'm just going to try orbiting oh now now I'm going to try the Atron because the Atron has already killed the Incursus and he's walked off so I did survive I didn't get a fight but I did what's known as I held the field which means I've just got four million worth of ammo so I will take that and I will dock up and I'll put that ammo in that station and that's mine but I still haven't got a fight yet now I don't know if you noticed there but I press shift when I clicked on these and that lights up something at the top if you've got thermodynamics as a skill what you can do is overheat your modules which means that you get extra oomph out of them and the extra oomph that you get depends on what the module is so I'm just going to dump that stuff now if you want a fight, sometimes you just ask for a fight. So I know that this Space Muffin character, who's minus 10, is up for a fight. So he's flashing, which means I can just engage him at the station. And now we're fighting. I'm orbiting him, probably just out with the damage that he can do with his blasters. But I'm shield tanked. So he's just killed me. Now this is what you do. Firstly, as I knew I was about to die, I started warping off to another station so your pod gets out of there. Secondly, you type GF in local, which means good fight. And that's it. I had a fight with this ship. I got four million in loot, which is now mine and I can keep that. I just set to go back to Jafit by doing set destination and I'll go back and get another ship. Now, to be honest, probably not best to warp in your pod. You can go to any station and get a free Corvette and that at least gives you a little bit more protection for your pod when you're flying through space. I'm setting my destination to Jafit 9 Aliastra Warehouse. If you look at your loss mail, it tells you a few things about the fight, about what happened. It shows you how much damage your ship took, which is 2,651 that was caused by this one pilot. It tells you the pilots involved, who got the final blow, which is who got the kill mail and who got top damage. The stuff that's in green dropped, which means that after my ship blew up, this stuff was sitting in the wreck the same way that we picked up the stuff out the other wreck. So the pilot who killed me could pick up this stuff. The stuff that's in grey, that didn't drop, it got destroyed. I chose to orbit there at about four and a half kilometers. I thought if he was blaster, that might be out, a little bit out with his range, because by the time that you orbit, that's what the orbit that you choose, but you might be a little bit further than that because you're going faster. So because I'm rockets and he's maybe blasters, he might not be getting full damage to me every time but what he can do is web me which slows me down so I could even have gone out a little bit further the advantage of orbiting in a rocket ship is you don't have to worry about the tracking on your guns as long as you're you're within range of the rockets to hit your target you can be going in any direction and it won't make much difference but it does make it more difficult for a ship with guns to shoot you because they need to track you but there are loads of videos about PvP about range control about how to use the different weapons I'm not even going to go into that 
It's a rush getting into a fight, particularly if it's something that you've not really done before. And the fact is, I've just made 4 million isk because I've gone out in a ship that was, well if it was you, given to you for free, and I just found that loot sitting there. If this sounds like something that you would be interested in trying out, look in the description for links to the page on my website which provides more details. Check out the other video that I've posted a link to about low security space and the differences between that and high security space. Dock up at this station, look for a guest who is in sapphire and steel, send them a message, open up a trade window and I'll get you a ship and you can just go out and PvP if I'm online. If I'm not online, send me an email in-game to MacGyver and tell me what kind of ship you want and I'll set you up a contract. The only thing that I ask for in return is that you let me know how you got on. If you got a kill, if you got a loss, if you enjoyed it, if you got a buzz, if you did it and thought, I'm never doing this again, drop me a, an email in-game and just let me know. Tell me your story, tell me what happened. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you take me up on my offer and I'll see you again next time. Bye now.